right, all right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, thank you. I know technology happens, my friends. So thank you so much for, for bearing with us this morning. We've got a lot to uh, get through this morning. So we're gonna go through the market update um, very quickly because there's a lot that I wanna cover uh, for you guys in the way of, um, we have some just news about, uh, I'll update again on the on the numbers for moratorium uh, so that you guys can keep those timelines in mind. But there's some other things I wanna make sure that we are reviewing this morning. So there's gonna be a lot that we kind of cover in this short amount of time. Uh, so let me, and then I'm gonna ask you guys uh, to please, please, please keep yourselves on mute, right? Keep yourself on mute when you're coming into the room and then we can go ahead and unmute if there's any questions or any of that good stuff that comes up. I am gonna switch on over to our slides. Okay, thumbs up if you can see the slides, okay. Perfect, perfect, awesome. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started. Um, as always, first thing I'm gonna go ahead and cover before we get started, the Telephone Consumer Protection Act, right? We have to make sure that we are uh, protecting you, protecting, you know, all of uh, our associates, we wanna make sure to remind you, right, that you must comply with the TCPA. Um, so of course, this is just kind of the, the little disclosure up front. Let's go ahead and jump into our numbers. Oh, there we go. Okay, awesome. So looking at some of the showing time data, we've been watching uh, this showing time data for a while. We know that the light blue line is gonna be at that pre-COVID 2019, that dark blue is we were watching uh, when it came to you know the last year of COVID nineteen, and then this golden line is really uh, more so this this particular last year. Now there's we always want to inspect what we're expecting whenever we look at some fluctuations or changes like this, because as we look at this, it could look like there is a dip in showings, and yet we know that that's not necessarily accurate. While there may be a dip in some of the scheduled showings that we're seeing, uh, part of that has to do with open houses being on the rise again and that, that introduction uh, and us having that opportunity for our clients to go out and see properties without scheduled appointments. Um, we also know that what happens when there's open houses, a lot of time real estate agents, and this is always a great technique uh, for yourselves as well, when we take a listing the opportunity to have a large group coming to the property um, all at once really gives us an opportunity to demonstrate that supply and demand, right? It also makes life a little bit easier than having to coordinate um, all the back-to-back -back appointments. And so that's part of what we're seeing uh, here as well, is people are going back to the old uh, sort of way of doing things. Of course, we'll continue to track uh, this data to see if there are any other major fluctuations and changes overall to just put it in perspective uh, from percentage points that we're looking at here 2019 was up about 27.5%. 2020, um, we saw that increase to about 87.7%. And right now we're actually fairly, uh, we're a little bit fairly low at negative 7.4%. So bottomed out even from the baseline uh, that we were at as it relates to scheduled showing time appointments, right? So again, not necessarily um, all appointments, this is just relating to that scheduling uh, data as well. Jumping over to the Los Angeles sales trend. So we do have updated numbers this week that we're gonna be looking at. As we look at some of these graphs, I want you guys to pay attention. We're looking at uh, May of 2021 and June of 2021, right? When we are reviewing month over month, when we start reviewing year over year, we're looking at June, of 2020 and June of 2021. So as we look at the number of properties that are for sale, we while there was an increase, right? While there was an increase month over month of 6.1%, overall, as we start looking at this data uh, year over year, we're seeing a decrease of 21.1%. So we know that there was a lot more inventory uh, that was on the market right over here. Right, it was over 10,000 properties. We were we were at pretty high in May and June of last year. And we saw that that kind of evened out and yet sales were low. So there was a lot of properties that were staying on the market. Obviously we've seen sales increase right within this year. And so that is impacting the number of properties that are for sale. 
because that feeds into uh, those absorption rates. We look at the number of properties sold month over month, we're seeing an increase, right? An increase right over here of a 10.3% overall. As we look at the year over year data, we're seeing an increase of 64.8, uh, almost 65% as well. Looking at our inventory trends of properties, new listings coming on the market, as well as pended month over month, there was a slight, honestly, it was fairly stagnant, a 0.1% um, decrease is, is not a huge, huge decrease. In fact, it accounted for about 10 properties uh, difference here in terms of the inventory coming on the market. When we look overall compared to the, to the same uh, month last year, we have seen an increase in the number of new listings by eight. 0.6 percent um, overall. When we start looking at pended, right month over month, we saw a slight increase in, of 2.6 percent uh, right over here as well. So that's going to be a slight increase here, uh, and an increase when we look at year over year of 16.8 percent. So higher than the amount of listings that are coming on, and yet we are still at least starting to see uh, that there was a little bit of an increase compared to that same point last year. Next month will be interesting data for us to look at because as we know, uh, last year we saw, you know, those listings continue to rise at about this point. And so we want to see if that same thing is going to hold true for this year. When we look at our pricing trends, right, we look pricing trends overall. One of the areas that I want you guys to pay attention to here is in this average active price May of 21 to June. So month over month, we saw a 3.1% decrease. Now, the reason that this is important when we start seeing uh, any sort of price decreases that are happening month over month is we want to make sure if we are putting properties on the market that when we think about or we're talking about pricing ahead of the market, so we have to study what's happening with the market right now. Overall, when we look at this same time exactly a year ago, there's been a 17.2% increase in the average active price. In the average sold price, there's been a 25.1% increase. And month over month on the average sold price, we see a 1.4% increase. But that 3.1% decrease is what we want to pay attention to, to make sure that we are not overpricing properties if the market um, is starting to hold. And the reason that I bring this up, we've also had some appraisal issues that have started to come up um, that had kind of slowed down a bit we're starting to see that happening again, right? So be very, very careful depending on what side of the transaction you're on. Um, if you are working on the listing side and you anticipate an appraisal coming in low, uh, watch your pricing and watch how you're communicating that to the sellers so that they have expectations that are gonna be uh, in alignment with, with what actually is likely to happen in the transaction. Make sure you have comparables to support the price, right? And, and I'm talking not just, you know, sold comparables, but look at, you know, what's active, what is the property competing against? So you can track that here in the market as well. We look at absorption rates. Absorption rate is still very, very low. We are still very much in a seller's market. Uh, right now we've got about 1.1 uh, month of inventory, it's decreased slightly, about 8.7% from last month. Um, of course, we know that about a year ago, that was significantly higher. That is a 51.8% decrease in terms of the amount of inventory that is on the market right now. Uh, that has to do with the fact that there are more sales occurring, even though there was more inventory um, at this point last year, there was a lot less sales. And so we see how that absorption rate uh, really factors in when it was about 2.3 uh, months of inventory. Right now, we have approximately, uh, so when we look at the sales, they, they've increased and the amount of inventory has decreased, which is what is giving us this absorption rate. Looking at days on market, it has stayed pretty stagnant uh, month over month, right? That's about a 4.8% decrease. It's really one day, right? Not a huge, huge decrease. And we look at this same point Last year, uh, it was it's a 33.3% decrease. The other area for us to look at is going to be uh, when we start looking at this sold versus original list price, it has gone up slightly. On average, properties are selling at about 102% of list price. When we look at this same time last year, that's a 6.3% increase. 
and sales trends, right? Sales trends. So moving on over to Orange County, when we start looking at the sales trends here, so again, we're seeing a lot of the similarities across the board in terms of um, the number of properties for sale, right? It has gone up slightly month over month, right? That's right over here. It's gone up a little bit. It's not a huge increase, but when we look at this same month exactly a year ago, we see that's a pretty significant decrease of 49.7% uh, for properties that have sold month over month. We also have an increase of about 9.2% overall looking at this same period of time last year. And that increase is 62.9%. Looking at our inventory trends. So the number of new listings that are coming on the market um, in Orange County, this is decreased by 8.8% month over month, right? So May to June of 2021, it's decreased by 6% year over year. The number of properties that have pended has also decreased month over month by 0.9%, a little bit less than 1% here. Uh, and current versus same month a year ago has increased by 5.8%. Looking at our pricing trends here, um, now in this area, we have slight, uh, slight increases in uh, the month over month of both active and sold price. So unlike Los Angeles County, where we started to see that active price dip a little bit, uh, in Orange County, we see that active price has gone up by 1.2%, um, year over year up 37.9%. That average sold price, right? That average sold price up 5.1% month over month and up 31% uh, percent when we look at that year over year data as well. So again, remember that these percentages of active average sold price uh, right now, that increase, that's what we want to be talking to homeowners about, right, of what their opportunity is when they've had an increase uh, in the amount of equity that's in their homes in case they need to access that. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that when we get um, to the end and we talk a little bit about what's happening in the forbearance market which is gonna be very, very, very important for us as well. Um, absorption rates in Orange County. So Orange County has even less inventory um, in comparison to the number of sales. It is at 0.7 months of inventory. So there's not even a, a full month of inventory available in Orange County. That's partially what is keeping, uh, where we saw a little bit of that dip in LA on the active price. We are not seeing that on Orange County because we know those inventory trends also put upward pressure on price. And days on market as well. So this uh, has actually decreased a little bit. So those days on market are getting tighter. That's very competitive market. And about 16 days on market down 11.1% uh, month over month, down 57.9% compared to the same time last year when we were at 38 days on average. Um, and the sold versus list price here is at about 100%. Uh, so what it's listed for tends to be what the properties are selling at on average. This is increased by 4.2% from last year uh, when properties were selling at about 96% of list price. Moving over to Riverside County. So I'm gonna go through these numbers and then I'm gonna highlight some stuff about Riverside County specifically, Riverside, um, even San Bernardino in Ontario. So I really want you to pay attention to these numbers because there is, um, whenever we look at what ha is happening around the industry, especially as it relates to some of the forbearances, we wanna keep an eye at, on some of the highest risk markets. Uh, Riverside has actually been dubbed one of the top 10 highest at risk cities, uh, followed closely by San Bernardino in Ontario, for um, foreclosure, right, with, with the impending market once we have the moratoriums lifted. So it's important that we look at some of the pricing trends here so you can communicate that to uh, your clients, right, and to your sellers in those areas, especially um, if they are potentially at risk for foreclosure. So we'll talk a little bit about that at the end, um, but I wanted to highlight that as we go into the Riverside trends. Um, overall, the number of properties for sale month over month, there was a 10.4% increase. Um, there was a 9.4% increase in the number of properties that have sold. When we look at this current versus exactly a year ago, um, there, of course, has been a decrease, 47.5% of the number of properties that are for sale. Uh, that's that, that inventory, right? As well as those sales increasing and kind of tightening up those absorption rates. Uh, and so 
when we look at the number of properties that have sold, uh, that is up by 24%. Looking at our inventory trends, overall month over month, there was a decrease of 1%. Uh, when we look at that same thing a year over year, uh, the number of new listings on the market in Riverside County has actually increased by 8.2% year over year. The number of properties that have pended, right? The number of properties that are pended, uh, that has increased by 16.1% a month over month, up by 13.9% year over year. When we look at our pricing trends, right? When we look at our pricing trends right over here, we've got a uh, the, the average pricing in Riverside County, the average active price month over month is down 5.3%. Average sold price month over month down 0.2%. I want you to take take these numbers into consideration here because again, when we're talking to sellers, we want to be talking about this access to equity uh, that they may have as well. When we look at the average active price up 22.4% year over year, and then even more important, this average sold price up 27.6%. Um, as a reminder, the, na the national average that we've seen sold prices increase across the board is 22%, right? So Riverside County at 27% um, is outpacing the market in terms of that upward pressure on price. Absorption rates, similar to Orange County, we've got 0.7% right over here. And then overall month over month, we see that is a pretty significant decrease of 54.6%. Looking at our average days on market, it's a 21. So similar to what we're seeing in Los Angeles County as well, that is down, sorry guys, uh, that is down 4.5%. Sold versus uh, original list price month over month has stayed about 102% uh, of the sold versus the original list price. Looking at the same time last year, the average days on market has decreased by 57.1%. Uh, and the sold versus original list price has increased by 5.2. Looking at, so last county, again, like I said, pay attention to Riverside, pay attention to San Bernardino. We're going to be talking about them in a couple minutes. These, these uh, areas are going to be really important when we start talking about that forbearance data as well. Um, so looking at these numbers very quickly, um, for sale, the number of properties for sale, we've seen month over month, a 12.1% increase and a 20.7% increase in terms of these uh, properties that are actually selling. So this dark green right over here. Of course, that trend, this period of time compared to this period of time, we've seen the number of properties for sale decrease by 29.3% and uh, sold properties increase by 31%. Looking at our inventory trends, Right. When we look at the inventory trends, we saw listings decline month over month by 4.7%. And then, of course, in comparison to the same period of time uh, last year, there was an increase of 9.3%. Now, while we saw a decrease in the number of listings, we saw a slight increase month over month in terms of the number of properties that are under contract at about 6.1% and a decrease uh, in from, from a year over year of about 2.5%. So that's this period of time right over here. Pricing trends. So similar to Los Angeles County, when we look month over month, we actually had a dip in the average active price of 1.4%, right? So this is a little bit of a dip here. Um, again, something that we wanna make sure that we are keeping an eye on uh, because if those, pro if those prices are starting to hold. We want to keep an eye on that and see where we're no longer on a, a very significant upward trajectory in terms of price. Um, that same period of time last year, however, the average active price has increased by 11.5%. The average sold price, because we see most of the negotiation happening right under contract, is up 1.7%. And overall, from this same period of time last year, up 28.9%. National average again is 22%. So we know San Bernardino County price uh, on an upward trajectory is outpacing the market. Average inventory 
right? 0.9 months of inventory a year, a little bit less than uh, the last month. Not a significant change, but still we don't have more than a month of inventory um, here in San Bernardino County. And then days on market and then sold versus list price percentage. So overall, we actually saw a slight increase in days on market one day, not, not too significant here, um, but overall from this same point last year, down 60.5% sold versus uh, original list price, properties that are selling at about 103% of list price in, uh, in San Bernardino County. That is an increase of 6.2% from last year. Okay, so we went through the pricing trends. Uh, these next items that we are gonna be going over, there's a lot of information here. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna move quickly um, here and I'm gonna cover this data fast because we've gone through the moratorium updates in some of our previous meetings. And so I wanna make sure to highlight that. And then there's a couple other things that we're gonna go through. So we know the two important dates, right? The two important dates that we have right now for the foreclosure moratorium, as of right now, the, uh, the final date that we've heard of so far is July 31st, 2021. That came federal, right? So that's for federally backed mortgages. And it came down um, from the Biden-Harris administration for that particular extension. It is possible that California um, does, does something different. And so we'll keep an eye on that, right? But we wanna make sure that we know right now, July 31st, so the end of this month is uh, the end, the potential end, of this foreclosure moratorium. The second piece, California specifically has extended the eviction moratorium through the end of September. I know a couple of you have reached out um, with questions again on you know, evictions and getting tenants out and they are protected by this eviction um, moratorium. So I just want you guys to keep an eye on these dates because this, there's obviously these dates have changed a lot. Um, the CDC had extended the eviction moratorium through July. Los Angeles set the precedent of September 30th and California followed suit with assembly bill at 832. There is also additional resources and additional support that are designed to assist those that maybe are behind on a rent or landlords that are not collecting rent, right? Depending on uh, what's going on with their tenants. So those are some great resources to provide to your clients. Now, a couple of things in terms of industry updates overall. So we, you know, sometimes we look at Black Knights data. Um, I wanna know, May was a very, very, very significant, uh, very significant month this year. When we look at home sales data, so when we're looking with uh, some of these larger reports, obviously you guys know I'm looking at data for us every single day and then looking at what's happening in our surrounding counties. But when we look at data overall, right, looking at the entire US, it's usually gonna be about a month or two behind uh, because they're collecting data from so many sources. So what was really interesting about May of this year um, is that this was the highest increase um, since we've collected data since the 1960s in terms of the appreciation on single family residences right, on single family residents. It's the fastest rate of appreciation and was the single greatest month in acceleration on home price growth. Now, obviously we're a little bit behind that. And so we wanna continue to watch what's happening with the market. And yet that's a conversation that you wanna be having with your homeowner clients. Um, when we look at the overall now, and this is where things kind of pair together, right? We also look at the overall number of active forbearance plans it has dropped. So for the first time uh, since early April of last year, the forbearance, the rate of, of pe people, homeowners and forbearance is below 2 million. Now, there's a couple moving parts here. Some of those is because there's expiration dates that have come up, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that all of a sudden people are out of, you know, hot water. It means expiration dates have come up. Notices are starting to come out. Right, we're starting to see uh, more and more people asking about what their options are for modifications. Um, one of the top 10 at-risk cities for foreclosure, this was data from the American Enterprise Institute. This is why I said it's important for us to start looking at Riverside, right? San Bernardino, Ontario. So Riverside was named as one of the top 10 at-risk cities for foreclosure. Riverside has 14.3% of the home loans in Riverside are delinquent. 
serious delinquency. Serious delinquency is anything that is accounted for is over 90 days delinquency is 10.5%. Means one out of every, uh, almost one out of every 10 homeowners in Riverside is seriously delinquent on their mortgage, right? Percentage of those loans that are backed by the FHA is 20.6%. Now this is the data for Riverside. San Bernardino and Ontario, though they didn't make that top 10, they were also highlighted as, as part of uh, this study as notable cities. And so that's something we wanna pay attention to because we know when it comes to uh, working you know, with our clients, part of our job, and I'm coming off the slides right now, but part of our job and what we do, we do two things, right? We help people create multi-generational wealth when we go help them purchase a property. And in scenarios like this, where we're looking at you know, this, this data and we're seeing how many people are potentially in some type of mortgage forbearance, in some type of situation, um, the majority of them don't exactly know what their options are. Now, here's the thing. Some of them will be able to do a loan modification. Some of them will have the opportunity to do a loan modification. That is assuming that they are able to do so. Um, I actually spoke with somebody this weekend who is in Riverside, who has a property out there. They were in a mortgage forbearance about uh, six months. They went through looking at their loan modification options and they may not have that opportunity. Why? Because the credit is shot, right? Because of everything that happened during the pandemic, they haven't regained the same level of gainful employment that they had. And so they're not a great candidate at potentially for a modification, right? Now looking at different options to see uh, what might be the best option for them. Um, part of exploring those options is you wanna really you know, help your client make the connections for them, educate them. And sometimes the only option is going to be to sell, to avoid foreclosure. And so you want to make sure you're having those conversations um, with your client because this is important, important information. The other thing I want to highlight before we jump off this morning um, is going to be, you know, some of you may have seen the post that I made about what's going on with Wells Fargo, right? I want to clarify on this. Wells Fargo as a financial institution has a lot of different programs that they offer. One of those programs is a personal line of credit or a portfolio line of credit. That is the product that they are discontinuing, okay? Now, will this impact all of your clients? Not necessarily, okay? It, it depends on what type of product line they have with Wells Fargo. What impact this is gonna have is those that do have those type of products if they don't find additional solutions and those accounts get closed, when an account gets closed, the, the amount of credit that we have decreases. So if we had um, to put it into simple terms or simple numbers, if we have $20,000 of credit and you have a line of credit that is now shut down and that was $5,000 of credit, right? I'm using really simple terms. Obviously I'm not a financial um, person. So this is just to kind of give you an idea. Um, and speak to a financial professional. But now instead of 20 grand, you have 15 grand of credit, which means that whatever credit amount you're using, your credit utilization goes up, which can decrease your score because your line of credit has been decreased and your credit utilization rate um, increases. There's a lot of different things around that. Um, the reason that I bring it up is because we know that when we're working with a client and they're pre-approved for a mortgage, what do we tell them? Don't go make a major financial purchase because it increases their credit utilization rate and that decreases their credit score. This is almost the reverse of that happening is there's the possibility that somebody could be in a situation where, you know, all of a sudden the, their um, credit rate utilization goes up or their credit score is impacted because these type of accounts are closing. So I wanted to give you guys some, some clarity around that and I encourage you if you have clients that are worried about it or they feel like this is potentially going to impact them, um, speak with the mortgage professionals to see what their options are. And then also remember that you also have um, the, the uh, different you know, credit repair individuals that you can utilize uh, to support that as well. So with that, 
I hope you guys have an absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal rest of your day. A couple of reminders. Don't forget, we have our team meeting a bold graduation on uh, next Tuesday, the 20th, right next Tuesday, the 20th, and we're going to have a lot of announcements. And on the 22nd, right on the 22nd, we have Beach Bonfire uh, with our lovely friends over at Huntington Beach. We're going to be doing a joint beach bonfire. So See you guys then. With that, have a great rest of your day, my friends.